I love Gran Turismo 7 and I love the new Forza Motorsport. There's things I love about Forza more and there's things I love about GT7 more. You can like two games. I know, it's a crazy thought. Now, my previous Forza Motorsport versus Gran Turismo 7 comparison was filled with drama. After discovering a gamma bug with the game engine was present, the video had to be reposted. But even then, commenters felt Gran Turismo was getting an unfair shake because it was on frame rate mode, or they felt Forza Motorsport was getting an unfair shake because the car paint wasn't shiny enough, even though I just picked the default option for both. So let's give it another shot. This time, we're going to be looking at a lot more. To start, we'll be taking a peek at five different tracks with five different cars and a plethora of options, including clear skies, rain, and nighttime driving. Then we'll look at the physics of each game and how both Forza and GT7 have decided to handle the response you feel on a direct drive steering wheel. That's right, we're busting out the Fanatec for this one. And I got to talk to somebody who has real world experience and tons of time in both Forza and Gran Turismo. And finally, we're gonna look at the frame rate both games sport, but first, the graphics. A bit of a toss up here in some situations and some will likely be a matter of preference. I think during the day, it's almost dead even. On Spa, it would seem that Gran Turismo 7 has opted for a lot more shadows during Sunset versus Forza Motorsport, but both still look great. Over on Nürburgring, in the rain in third person, there is a clear winner with Forza Motorsport looking miles better in terms of what's going on. However, in the interior view, I think it's a bit closer with Forza still being my preference. Now, over on Suzuka, at night, in the rain, Gran Turismo 7 made some choices in terms of lighting that I just really don't understand. There's no track lighting whatsoever, none of the environment is lit up, and when I googled this, it's apparently a known thing in the GT7 community. In terms of nighttime driving, I vastly prefer the Forza Motorsport look of Suzuka, but I understand that Gran Turismo 7 is going for a more realistic look. It really was just an artistic decision. The best way to correct it was by using the Gran Turismo 7 exposure correction to make things visible at night. But if you want realism, leave it at the default settings and do a few terrifying laps at 12 miles per hour like I did. Going back to Watkins Glen, we have both games set at night with one being a lot darker than the other. One challenge is that the weather presets in Gran Turismo 7 are a bit more vague than Forza, but there's a lot more of them to choose from. I hopped into a Pagani for this look and did a few laps. I think the windshield reflections in Forza are nice, but I think this one is absolutely a draw and both really do just look great. And finally, Le Mans. For this, we're rocking a Ford GT, the Gran Turismo GT being painted black with a number two applied so I could get it somewhat close to Forza Motorsport. I've got to give the edge to Forts on this track, which we ran at sunset for one reason. The blindingly gorgeous sunrise peeking over the horizon as you drive past the Dunlop logo. I love the style and it was really hard for me to make a choice about which I like more at the end of the day. Now, would I play Forza normally on quality mode, which is what all this footage was captured at, by the way? No, I would play both of these games with frame rate prioritized, and in Forza Motorsports case, I almost exclusively play in performance ray tracing mode. It just looks phenomenal. So at the end of the day, the graphics are kind of a toss up for me. And we should note that Gran Turismo 7 has a ton of other bells and whistles that I didn't even talk about, like 120 Hertz mode, the VR that I'm really excited to try out. But it's time to move on. Let's talk about the actual physical effects you feel on a steering wheel, because these two games have made some very different decisions in that department. So out of the box, it's almost universally agreed that Forza Motorsport has terrible default settings for the wheel. We will be testing on default settings though, and we will be testing on a Fanatec GT7 DD Pro, which is really the same base as the CSL DD, if you're familiar with direct drive wheels. And yes, we are using the eight nanometer boost. 
And this may be silly to some of you, but as a visual aid, I put a water bottle on top of my steering wheel to better convey just how much motion is being output by the device. The results are mixed. When you drive up to a curb, your steering wheel should react at least a little bit, even at the slower speeds. Here's a real world example I filmed in a quiet parking lot. No matter how slow you're going, you should get some play in the steering. So on default settings, I went to Nürburgring, which I probably said incorrectly, and drove over the alligator strips to see what would happen. Forza conveys the information in a much different manner than GT7, which is surprising to say the least. Gran Turismo 7 might just overdo it a tad, and Forza may be underdoing it in my opinion. But this was all much closer than Spa. On the left, you can see that Forza Motorsport on the default settings conveys a little to no information on some sections of the track, while Gran Turismo 7 is really overdoing things. I did this comparison on several points of the track to convey that the default settings from Forza Motorsport just don't do a good enough job of conveying data to you as you're driving. But for fun, let's see what Forza can really do and crank everything up to the maximum allowed option. Here are the results with Forza set to max and GT7 set to six and six. It's getting a lot closer in terms of feeling, and now you can clearly see that Forza is capable of conveying an appropriate amount of information to you as the driver. It's just about getting it all dialed in how you like it. Something I'm still trying to hone in on, and it seems like the rest of the internet is also. Now I feel like I'm still a novice in the sim racing scene, but you know who's not? Super GT. He has a ton of experience with Forza, a ton with Gran Turismo, and I wanted to get his thoughts on the settings. Yeah, I found that the physics on Forza were actually really heavy with standard settings. Forza definitely seems to be a game where you have to change the settings. The settings, the, the standard settings aren't particularly good. I'm still going through that process right now, trying to work out what is the optimum setup. But there's, there's a setting called things called Road Feel or Road Scale, like turning that one up. Pneumatic uh, Feel, and I turn that one down. And just overall strength of the wheel, overall force, just turn that down as well because I felt like it was just too heavy. So I'm still trying to work it out, but um, I think I'm getting towards a better place uh, compared to the, the standard. I am a big fan of his channel, by the way. Anyway, every setting video I've seen has been pretty different, but there is one more thing I wanted to take a peek at just to be thorough, and that's the frame rate. Both games are pretty great. The only time I could get Gran Turismo 7 to even dip on any mode was with max rain and max cars in an evening setting. Even then, it really wasn't all that noticeable. On Spa, Forza Motorsport is locked at 30 FPS in quality mode and 60 FPS in both performance modes. On the GT7 front, it's the same story. Spa is locked at 60 FPS no matter the mode you choose. Even the frame rate dips in the rain weren't that big of a story to be honest. The bigger story there is just how bad of a driver I am in the rain. <laughs> At the end of the day, we can compare these two games, but really, I love Gran Turismo 7 because it got me into sim racing. I got the G29 steering wheel to get into that game, and then I got the Xbox equivalent to get into Forza Motorsport. But now I have the Fanatec, so the real question I have is how do I get better at sim racing games, period? Here's what Super GT had to say. So if you are just starting out, you, know, you can turn on racing lines so you have a good idea where to brake, where to turn, and you know how to position your car on the track. But I think learning from others, like if you don't want to watch YouTube videos, then just uh, jump jump online. Um, there's probably always going to be a few really quick guys in the lobby, and I suppose the job of just trying to follow them and just trying to learn something from them, maybe even save the replay and just watch what they're doing. And that's what I've always done in the past, just studying the best players, the, the player that beats you. Like, what did he do? Why did he do it? What car did they use? And what lines were they taking? There's so much you can learn from, from fast players. Thank you so much for watching. Which game do you currently prefer? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more about racing, check out our Forza Motorsport review. And then come back for all things gaming right here on IGN.